So today let's talk about how you can use inter market analysis to improve your trading profits. Let's talk about that right now. First thing first, what is inter market analysis? Some people give it another different term cross market analysis but what is cross market analysis let's say today you want to buy a pair of jordans you go to the small shop you look at the price 200 bucks knowing that there's a second shop beside of course you're gonna go to the other shop to compare to see which one is cheaper you do inter shop analysis so when you go into financial markets you want to compare the relationship the prices among different markets you are conducting inter-market analysis on the other hand if you're the shop owner all right when your competitor one day decides to cut their prices the chances of you cutting your prices is going to increase as well because you are stay competitive so you can say that the price of the shoes are positively correlated with each other because when one price comes down for one shop, chances are the prices for another shop selling the same product is going to go down. Same thing with the financial markets. When certain asset class goes up, the probability of another asset class that is related to it is also going to go up. But the question is, how much is it going to go up? So this comes to my first point. So you can measure this relationship in two ways. The first one, you can look at it visually. Two graphs move in the same direction most of the time. Two graphs move in the opposite direction most of the time. Example, if you overlay the S&P chart over Aussie Yen chart, and hence because Aussie dollar is the base currency and it responds to risk on environment in the same way as the stock market most of the time, hence, it tends to move in the same direction. So another more specific way to measure this relationship is to look at correlation coefficient. To the math geeks, this is for you, okay? Correlation equals to covariance of the two data streams, two assets that you're looking at, divided by their standard deviation. If this is too complicated for you, let's look at it in a more simple... If you are to plot a scale, you have all the way to the end which is negative one all the way to the positive end which is positive one and in the middle you have zero and if you further divide it you have negative 0.5 over here and then 0.5 over here so let's say if two asset classes their correlation coefficient is 0.5 positive 0.5 what does it mean it means that 50% of the time, they will move in the same direction. So over here, this area is where two asset classes would have positive correlation. This means that these two markets, they are going to move in the same direction most of the time. Okay? How about here? From 0 to negative 1 is the area of negative correlation. This means that if one asset class goes up, another one that has a negative correlation with it is going to go down. Example, if you plot S&P 500 with volatility index chart, you realize that most of the time when stock market goes up, VIX is going to go down. When VIX goes up, stock market is going to go down. So let's say two asset classes, they have a negative correlation of 0.5. This means that 50% of the time, they will move in the opposite direction. Then the question is, what correlation number is considered strong? I would say more than 0.8 is a strong positive correlation and a very strong correlation would be at least 0.9. Understand that no two asset classes are perfectly positively correlated. This means that no asset classes has a correlation coefficient of 1 or negative 1 because it's just impossible. So if one day you go to one of the shoe shops and they cut prices, it can give you a clue that okay, maybe other shoe shops would also have already cut prices. So same thing with 
intermarket analysis, for example, commodity prices. It can tell you the potential direction of interest rates. It can tell you the potential direction of inflation rates. And also can tell you where the economy is going. And of course, these two are related to each other as well. And if you take another example, Canadian yen with oil prices. One of the main exports of Canada is oil. So hence, if you plot the two charts together, you realize that they tend to move in the same direction most of the time, but not all the time. And one thing about correlation is that it only works out in the larger time frames. If you look at the smaller time frames, minute time frames, hourly time frames, you realize that the relationships are random. And if you look at it carefully, you realize that all prices most of the time is going to move first. It's going to U-turn first before Canadian Yen makes its move. And there are many reasons why they are correlated to each other, but I'm not going to go into detail for this video, maybe next time. So back to this, use it to provide clues as a confirmation. This means that you cannot use it to enter a trade alone. You cannot be like, okay, all prices, you turn now, I'm gonna buy now. What's your other reason? That's it. When you buy Jordans, you don't only look at the price, right? You also look at other things for confirmation. You need to look at the color. You need to look at the size. You need to check whether the cashier is nice to you or not. Use it as a confirmation. In addition to your technical analysis, in addition to your fundamental analysis, in addition to your risk management, everything else. And sometimes markets in itself, it can provide you a clue as to when a recession is gonna come. You realize that most of the time, stock market, it tends to move before the economy. Freaking end of March, early April, when the pandemic just started, stock market, guess what? It U-turn. S&P 500, leading indicator for economy. Futures market as well. Commodities market as well. Third point, very important. Learn to spot direct correlations. Learn how to spot the fake correlations. Fake as shit, just like your freaking X. Doesn't mean that if the lines move in the same direction, then it means that they have a direct relationship with each other. Give you one example. This year, there are people who make tons of money selling what? Masks. So over time, this year, the sales increase. If you plot a graph, it looks something like this goes up, okay? This year, what else also increased in terms of sales? Board games. So if you plot a graph, it's gonna go up as well. So does this mean that the next time board game sales increase, mass sales are also going to increase? Does the relationship make sense? If two asset classes move in the same direction, does the relationship make sense? Or is it due to some external factor? What's the external factor for this? Stupid COVID-19 when the pandemic is over. And for some reason, in some year, board game sales increase. And there's no pandemic, no more. Does this mean that face mask is gonna increase? The increase in sales in board games might be because of a certain movie that's released, then people are inspired to play board games. Can be due to many factors, right? If the correlation doesn't make sense, then it is not going to last long. Then you cannot use it as a confirmation. Understand? So in the past, I've made a talk where I share a little bit more detail on how different markets are related to each other. You can go and check it out, okay? Talk to you in the next video. Bye.